One of the most common questions I get in the comment section of videos is when to sell a stock. Well, today I'm going to share with you guys the 10 ways on how I decide if I'm actually going to sell a stock. I cannot wait to share this with you guys today. Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about when to sell a stock, guys. I'm going to take you through the 10 ways on, on basically how I decide to sell a stock or when to sell a stock because, and there's really only 10 situations on when I would actually sell a stock. So it worked out perfect here today, guys. So I'm gonna really enjoy sharing this with you guys because you ask it so often in the comments section. And so once and for all, I'm gonna do a video about it and answer all your guys' questions here. So I hope you guys enjoy this video today. Hit a thumbs up if you do, and let's get into this, guys. Number one, one of the first, the first way I know when to sell a stock is if the stock goes up a lot and it becomes overvalued overvalued. If it becomes overvalued, in my opinion, then it's time for me to sell those shares. So by overvalued, every time I go into a stock, every time I buy a stock, there's like a price I have in my head of, you know, if this stock hits such and such amount within this certain amount of time, I would probably sell it. Like that's what I have in my head. And, and if it gets to a PE ratio that's too high based upon the growth rate. So maybe say, say it gets to a 30 PE, but yet they're only grown revenue and profit at maybe a 10% rate per year, might not be a stock I'm interested in at, at that time because that might be overvalued in my opinion. So if a stock gets overvalued and, and it goes up a ton, I just get out of it, guys, especially if it's in a really quick amount of time. I mean, I've had, I've been fortunate enough to have some stocks I've held over time that I invest in them and then they go up 20, 30, 40% in a matter of a couple months. And I'm like, okay, this is a way bigger gain than I ever expected in such a quick amount of time. It's time for me to get out of that stock. So that's the first way I can decide on if I'm going to sell a stock, guys. Number two. If the fundamentals of the underlying company change and you do not like them, then that's probably a time to sell the stock. If, if I'm ever in a stock and the fundamentals of that company changes and I don't like where the fundamentals are going in that company, the underlying business we're talking about, then it's just time for me to get out flat out, guys. It's time to just say, you know what? That one, you know, even if we took a loss that was a bad company, you know, it's time to get out. If the fundamentals change of that company and, and they're going in the wrong direction, in my opinion, it's no shame in the game of just getting out of it because that wasn't the stock you went into in that first place, guys. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're in a company and, you know, their, their business model is a certain way. And then all of a sudden they change that business model while you're investing in it for one reason or another. Could be outside pressure from other investors or big investment funds. It could be a lot of different factors, guys. Or it could just be bad business plan. If it changes and you're like, I don't see a future in that type of business model, there's no shame in the game of selling that stock and getting out, guys. So that's the second way I know when to sell a stock. The third way is if I have a better stock to put the money in. The bottom line is I want my money placed in, in the best companies possible. I like to be a little bit diversified. You know, I hold always between, generally speaking, generally speaking, between two and about six stocks, depending on the time. So I'm always a little bit diversified, but at the same time, I want my money in the best stocks possible. So if that means if I'm holding shares of a certain company and I think that money could be better put toward another company, I put the money there. So even, even if I'm, you know, if, even if I think the other one has a good potential, I'm still going to put the money in the other stock because the way I view it is I got to put my money in the best position possible to make money. So if I think stock ABC has a better future than stock XYZ, I'm going to put it in ABC, guys. That's the bottom line. You know, I'm going to put the money toward the best stocks possible. And that's just the way I think. And, and why am I going to hold a company if I think, uh, you know, it's just a good stock versus this one's like the best deal I've ever seen type situation, guys. So that's the third way I know when to sell a stock. If there's another company I think that's the, the money should be put toward, I go ahead and sell that other company and put the money toward the one I think has the best future. Number four. 
If you feel your company has a major competitive threat that's about to come online, that's going to really hurt the business model. This can happen in tech often, guys. This can really happen in tech more than probably any other sector. A competitive threat comes in, you know, an Apple, a Samsung, someone like that that has a lot of power and they can really hurt an electronics company if they come into their space. So, and it's not just that, it's uh, many different sectors, guys. So you gotta watch out for those competitive threats out there that if there's one that you're thinking, man, that, that, that company has a great product or a great service or something that can really knock my company off, might be time to sell it. So if you're ever just in that situation, you're like, uh, that company, they're, they're looking like they can beat us, then you might wanna sell that stock because why do you wanna be in a stock that has a major competitive threat like that if you think that other company has a good chance of taking market share from your company, guys? So think about that one. Number five, if you feel a recession is right around the corner, you may want to sell stocks. Um, now, this is a hard one. You, you got to be really, really freaking exact. You got to be like 99% sure that a recession is coming to actually go ahead and sell all your stocks or sell stocks in general and speaking. You got to really be sure of that because there's always threats out there. And I talked about this in so many videos in the past, guys. There's always threats out there. There's always, what if a terrorist attack happens? What if a major, you know... Um, what if a major bankruptcy happens at one of the big financial institutions, something like that? There's always like threats out there that could take down the economy. What if this policy comes into play? What would happen to the economy? There's always threats, guys. So you got to be really, really freaking sure, uh, you know, a recession is actually coming or stock market crash is coming to actually sell your shares or sell all your shares, guys. So, but at the same time, if you really are like 99% sure on this, then that makes sense to sell stocks, guys. And I would sell stocks if I ever felt like we're going to be on the verge of a recession about to start. I would get out of stocks, absolutely. Or if I felt like, man, as the big crash is coming, I would get out of stocks, guys. No question about it. So that's reason number five. Reason number six. If the management of that company, if their tone changes, and I mean kind of changes negatively, that's a big one to watch out for, guys. I'll give you an example of a company I've been invested in in the past and done extremely well in. It's a company named Cirrus Logic, tip, ticker symbol uh, C R U S, Cruise. Cirrus Logic is uh, the main audio chip supplier for Apple, for the iPhones, right? And for a lot of the iPads and some other devices Apple has, but they're mainly an iPhone company. They get around 85 to 90% of their revenue from Apple, from Apple. So when I was invested in that company, it was very important for me to listen to what the CEO was saying, how the tone was coming out. Because I think with Cirrus Logic, in their contracts with Apple, they cannot talk about specifics with their relationship. They can only talk about generalities or general, is that even a word, generalities? <laughs> they can only talk about general terms and whatnot. They can't talk about specifics of, oh yeah, we're going to get dropped out of the next iPhone or something. They can't talk about that. So you have to really listen to the tone of what the CEO is saying and, and how does the tone sound. You listen to that, and then you can get some clues about okay, things are still really good with them. The you know uh, d the design activity and whatnot is ongoing, or you know what, I think I fear something. So, if management tone changes and all of a sudden it was a negative tone, then that might mean it might be a stock you need to start to get out, guys. So pay attention to a lot of those psychological things. Take some uh, psychology classes, you know, if you haven't already, you know, even if you're not in college, I highly suggest take some psychology classes because it can seriously help you if you can read people and those kinds of things, guys. It like legit works because it's very important when you're investing to sometimes tell if somebody's BSing, somebody's telling the truth and tell those little variabilities in their tone and things like that, guys. So pay attention to that. Number seven here, number seven. If a lot of insiders, and by insiders, I mean executives in the company, if a lot of them are selling left and right, they're selling shares left and right, might be a little clue on that something's about to go wrong with that stock. If, if the CEO is all of a sudden selling shares, a bunch of shares, and CFO, and the COO, and the CIO, and all these guys and gals that are executives at the company, if all of a sudden they're selling shares left and right, should be a sign that, man, maybe something bad is about to happen in that stock and it's not a perfect thing like just because an insider sell, the stock's gonna go down or the company's gonna struggle or something. But many times I've seen it where executives start getting out 
And then all of a sudden, about a year later, all of a sudden, something happens with that company that they really start struggling with. So keeping an eye on the executives and, and what their sales and buys are, it's really important. Also, if, if executives are buying heavy, sometimes that's a sign maybe you should buy. Uh, perfect example, Wynn Resorts. Wynn Resorts was a $240 stock. It dropped all the way down to $52. All of a sudden, what happened? Uh, it actually dropped a little below fifty-two dollars. I think it dropped to forty-nine dollars. All of a sudden, uh, an announcement came out. Steve Wynn bought like ten, twenty, thirty million dollars worth of shares. Then the stock went up a bunch off of that, basically, and then it got announced again. He bought a whole bunch of shares, and now where that stock is, it's at ninety-five dollars. About a year later, so it's went up massively since then. So he knew. That was kind of the bottom. He knows the company very well. He should know it better than anybody ever in the industry, in history, the casino industry. So that might have been a sign that, wow, Steve Wynn's buying tens of millions of dollars of shares. Hmm, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't just put that money in his company if he was stupid. That's probably a good uh, sign that maybe I should be buying at this point, guys. So pay attention to insiders. It can help you immensely. But don't, don't go so overboard with it that just because somebody sells, you're like, oh, I need a seller. Just because someone buys, you need to buy. It's just something to pay attention to and then value that in your whole uh, valuing of the stock. Number eight here, guys. If the company is taking losses, if they're losing money and they're at a real risk of bankruptcy, might be a sign that uh, you need to get out of that stock. And, and this would never happen if you would do what I do, which is my main one of my main themes in modern long-term investing, is uh, the balance sheet and making sure they have plenty of cash on the balance sheet, investments versus debt and those kinds of things. So you would never be in this situation, but let's assume you just don't care about balance sheets and those kinds of things and your company's taking losses. And if that company's getting close to bankruptcy or you, there's even like a thought that man, this company might go bankrupt or maybe could go bankrupt, might be a sign you want to get out of that stock, guys. And if I was ever in that position, which I've never been in that position because I value the balance sheet so much, I would get out of that stock. Uh, for instance, GoPro, right? That's a stock that they took huge losses this year. They lost a massive amount of money. They took huge losses because of the layoffs they did and all those kinds of things and uh, a lot of different factors, a recall of the drone. They took huge losses. But because I value the balance sheet so heavy before I even got into that investment, I saw how much cash they had. I saw how no debt they had. I said, that's a great balance sheet. So even if they continue to have a uh, struggle year in 2016, which they did throughout my investment and currently, it's okay because they're all right. They're going to survive. There's no like risk of bankruptcy because they had so much money on the balance sheet as long as they can turn the company around. So if you're ever in a company situation where maybe they all of a sudden start taking losses and you didn't value that balance sheet, that's a scary time to be in, guys, and that might be a sign to sell. And number nine, if growth in the company slows way down. So many times I've seen it where a company is high flying and their growth is, is just parabolic. And, you know, I'm talking about these companies like an Amazon. I'm talking about companies like a Netflix, a Tesla, um, GoPro at one point, Fitbit at one point. Some of these stocks, Apple at one point, that were growing super fast. And then all of a sudden, the, the one quarter they showed a major slowing in growth and boom, the shares died. So you've got to be really careful for that, guys. Um, a, a company that's uh, majorly slows down if you're in a high PE stock. If you're in one of those high growth stocks and also in growth stops, I mean, Amazon's growing revenue right now at like 20% a quarter. If they all of a sudden went to like an 8% revenue growth, that stock would take a massive tumble overnight, guys, and just continue to take a tumble. So you got to watch out for any companies that if you're in one of those high PE stocks, Watch out for it, guys. Watch out for taking that tumble if the growth slows. That might be a sign you just need to get out while you can because if, if especially if you don't think that growth is going to somehow recover very soon because then what happens is a lot of those investors that were invested in growth, they go away from it, right? And then the value investors don't come quite in yet because they want it to drop more so it's, it makes a value proposition. So you got the growth investors selling out. You got value investors waiting until they get to a certain point. And then finally, once it drops a massive amount, the value investors are like, okay, this is a good value for us now. Now we can start buying it, guys. So that's how the game plan goes there, guys. Number 10. If a stock is in an industry that's facing a lot of political pressure on the industry, might be a sign you want to get out. Another perfect example, well, this is the second time we talked about Wynn Resorts in this one, and this is a phenomenal example for this one, guys. 
Wynn Resorts was a stock, uh, for you guys who don't know, it's a resort company. They have uh, some of the best resorts ever in Vegas and Macau. Well, Macau is where they got 70% of their revenue from. This is their most important market because, I mean, it's insane how much people gamble over there and whatnot. So that was a stock that was over $240 at one point. And this was in about 2013-ish, maybe 2014 early. So what happened is all of a sudden the Chinese government decided on the whole Macau market they were going to start a big corruption ban, a big corruption ban and trying to get corruption out of the Macau system and money laundering, all those kinds of things. Well, that was probably the sign that it should have been like anybody that was invested in Win or any of the, the Macau stocks at the time should have said, I need to get out of this. I need to get out of this industry right now because it's under a ton of political pressure that's about to come down on us. That was a big sign. And the Chinese government was very uh, forthright in, in warning about this. We're going to we're gonna crack down on this corruption. Sure enough, it did. Macau revenues uh, went from, oh gosh, it was like uh, $70 billion or something like that to like $40 billion or $38 billion per year. It dropped drastically. All companies in Macau all companies, their profits got slashed, some in half, some by 60, 70%, guys, massive amounts. Stocks like Win dropped from, or went from 240 bucks to a $50 stock in a matter of less than two years, guys, less than two years. So if you're, in a, if you're in a company that's under a ton of political pressure or there's a huge political threat out there, guys, and it's a serious one, it's not just like some kind of joke one, might be a sign you need to get out and sell out of that stock, guys. So these are the 10 ways personally that I judge a stock in on if I should sell out of that stock and sell that stock, guys. And I hope this helped you immensely and all you guys that ask these questions all the time in the comment section, you know, should I sell a stock? And mostly, most of the time it's it's when you guys are up, you know, 20, 30% on a position or something, you guys make great on it. You're like, oh, the stock went up a bunch, should I sell out? Those kinds of things. And and I don't really give you individual advice, but this is, this is how I personally judge judge stocks and how uh, if it's one of these criteria, I'm probably getting out of it. I'm probably selling that stock, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this today. Hit a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to comment on the video in general. I'd love to hear from you guys in that comment section. If you just came across this channel and you have not subscribed yet, you may want to. We talk personal finance on the channel. We talk entrepreneurship on the channel. I'm an actual business owner. I give away a ton of my business tips. We talk the stock market the most in this channel out of everything. Thank you guys and have a great day.